Jill sat me down after a camp and was like, you're not in my plans for the World Cup. And I cried all the way from LA to on my flight home to New York. And yeah, it was like, I kind of stepped back and I was like, all right, well, what am I gonna do? Like, this fire was inside of me just to, to make it no matter what. And I wanted to, I was almost angry that I let this opportunity slip through my fingers and that you only get to play this sport for so long. And I pretty much just told myself I'm going to make it or I'm gonna like die trying. I worked on every aspect of the game, agility, speed, strength, skill stuff, playing with guys, decision making, brain stuff, eating right. I needed to be like mentally stronger because you're up against the best of the best. And I think that that's what I let slip. I knew that all the work that I did, all of the times not getting called or getting cut or pretty much not being good enough, I knew that this time I was ready like more than ever. In March of 2016, all the work was rewarded and the doubts erased. Long was named to the U.S. national team roster, but not without questions that she was ready to answer. I read an article saying, like, meteoric rise, and I'm like, no. I've been working for years, and every single day, two a days, and it wasn't meteoric at all. It's been more like climbing and then falling and then climbing and then falling, but just always climbing a little bit more. I don't know what it was that didn't stop me from just like giving up because I was so determined. I was willing to go through anything to just get my chance and just to prove that. And how about that from Allie Long? Now that I'm there, I wouldn't want to do anything else. It's This is my passion, it's my dream, and there's nothing else I'd rather be doing, so I think it's all worth it. For 25 years, um, I've seen Johnston, and you know, it's special. That was the name that I dreamed of seeing on the back of the jersey, and the first like time I saw my name on, on someone's jersey that they bought because they liked the way I play was pretty surreal, really special, um, and a huge honor. I am recently married and it was the most amazing day. I rarely feel like I could use the word perfect, but I mean, it was outside by the beach, a lot of white flowers I had from Chicago restaurant, Jen Hoy, Sophia Huerta, Alyssa Nair, and Kristen Press, which was um, very special. They've been amazing teammates. They've been amazing support. They've seen Zach and I grow. I met Zach end of my sophomore year in college. We started dating kind of before our professional career started. Zach got drafted to the Philadelphia Eagles, and then that kind of following right after him, I got drafted to Chicago. Us both being athletes and, and kind of kind of going towards our professional careers at the same time, um, already kind of had an instant bond. He's very driven, and same with me, and kind of, you know, the kind of athletes that we want to be on and off the field. We've had to learn a lot. We've had to grow. I mean, we started dating when we were 1920s and you know it was, it was fun to grow up with someone I think that's the biggest thing is we understand each other it's just nice to have someone on the same wavelength the wedding day was a very special day all around to kind of you know have two professional careers kind of become one I will be changing my last name to Ertz on my jersey I'm still JJ that nickname has been with me since I can remember starting playing with my club team it's a pretty cool symbol for, you know, after you get married to become one. I know it means a lot to him, um, as well it does to me, um, to be able to, to share the last name. But I feel like in my whole journey of soccer, I've always had a next chapter, a next journey. You know, I want to help win an NWSL title. I, w I would love to be a part of another World Cup. But it's pretty exciting to, you know, kind of, you know, see that as a, as a next step, a new journey with my new goals, you know, new goals, new aspirations, new last name. It's 
I heard from the organization in DC and they had called me up and said, you know, thanks for everything that you've done, but we are going in a different direction. I wasn't expecting it. I never thought they would have let me go or, or traded me or I guess as a player, a franchise player and captain of the team, I never thought that they would treat me like they did. You learn a lot about how to handle those types of situations, you know, and you have to really uh, sit back and, and um, put everything in perspective um, in a calm way because at first I was really angry. Um, I, I, I wasn't able to hide that. I gave every single piece of myself to that club is what I had thought. And I took everything that I was thinking, you know, all that anger and kind of turned it into a positive. For Krieger, that reflection brought an awareness of the possibilities, one which allowed her to embrace this new journey. If you stay in one place, just with anything that you do, then you're not challenging yourself, you're not growing as a person. So you know what, this has opened up doors for new opportunities for me to go play for Tom again and come and play for an incredible community and organization and fans that you are so supported. And I, I feel that even as a newer player, you know, the fans have our back, the community has our back, the organization gives us anything that we need to be successful. This is now my club, and this is who I'm fighting for. So my focus is strictly on how can I help Orlando Pride win every single game, no matter who the opponent is. But the fuel is, is always there, because I'm very competitive and determined to win. I want to win an NWSL championship. I, you know, I was so close. I've been so close. And that is something that in the U.S. as an American homegrown player, I, I want to win. I mean, I won a Champions League title in 2008 with Frankfurt and World Cup and then the first time oldest Olympian for the U.S. And, and those are all amazing, incredible honors that I hold dear close to my heart. But um, an NWSL championship would, would be would be really, really, really great next to <laughs> maybe my World Cup medal. Uh, that's something that's still there. gone through a stretch early in the season where we couldn't find a goal from not only her but from anybody. I remember in that six game stretch we just felt so negative because all the forwards were like this is our job we have to score and we weren't doing it. She was always getting herself into really good scoring positions but she wasn't consistently putting the ball in the back of the net so it's one thing that we we talked about a lot. My dream has always been to be with the national team and I knew that in order to get called into a camp it was going to have to be something big and for a forward that's scoring goals and it finally got to the point where I was like I have to make a decision here because I could see my career going in a, a way that I didn't want it to and I wanted to prove that I should be with the national team and that I'm one of the best players in this league and that I can be a leading scorer and I just relaxed and thought I know how good I am, I'm confident, just let it happen, and, and it did. Ojai, in our goal! A spectacular goal from Ojai! You hear athletes talk about it, it just seems like it's in slow motion. And I think that's kind of what happened for Kay. She just started to put back-to-back -to -back games together, and then another game together, and then the confidence just grew with it. I think scoring goals is 100% mental. Sometimes I wasn't even trying to shoot. I wasn't even trying to score and it was going in. And I truly think it's a mentality of just getting in a positive place and then the goals will come. Where the league is today is incredible. It gives you a platform every single weekend to, to try to make that team. But just four years ago, it wasn't like that. And so just to see the growth in that time has been 
awesome for me. And for young girls to have role models to look up to and to have a league to look up to. And so I think it's so important for them to understand they can be professional athletes. You don't always have to watch men playing soccer or football or basketball. Women can do this too, and that's what I love about this league. When I was 15, um, I started noticing this bump coming from my stomach. It started causing me pain, it started getting bigger, and I just realized that this wasn't normal. And then it was just a whirlwind. I was you know, seeing doctor after doctor, test after test. Next thing I know, I'm going in for surgery. So after I went into surgery, they found out that they could not remove the tumor. And a few days later, I found out that I did have cancer, and um, I ended up having to go through three rounds of chemotherapy. The most scared I've ever been was when um, I went into anaphylactic shock. I remember sitting in my bed, eating dinner. All of a sudden, I got this real metallic-y taste in my mouth, and I started you know, getting really, really warm, and all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. Next thing I know, there's like eight nurses and doctors swarming into my uh, hospital room. I remember seeing out of the corner of my eye, my dad uh, ran right out of the room, basically because he couldn't, you know, watch. Um, and my mom just sat there with me, uh, holding my hand, and within a few minutes I was, you know, able to breathe again. But that was by far the scariest moment. After three rounds of chemotherapy, the shrunken tumor was able to be successfully removed and Sarah was officially cancer free. I just celebrated my uh, 12th year anniversary. That day that I got the phone call from the doctors, I didn't believe it was over, to be honest. And I, I kind of looked at my mom and I was like, okay, so what's next? And they're like, you're healthy. And I, I couldn't get over it. I'm like, all right, well, when do I have to come back to the hospital? You know, and they're like, you're fine, you can go back to your normal activities. And I was in complete shock. If you look at anybody's life, there's you know, extreme lows, there's extreme highs. And for me, it was having to deal with cancer you know, at the age of 15. And you know, I don't think any person, let alone a child, should have to you know, go through cancer treatments. But it's something that's made me put things into perspective. So no matter if I'm having like a bad day with soccer or my personal life, I've, I know that I've overcome so much. I think the biggest thing for me is just to persevere. So no matter what life throws at you, there's always a way to go about getting through it. Growing up, my dad was really supportive. And my mom, she was not quick to support me in, in soccer because I think culturally in Costa Rica, it was not supported, but it was looked down upon. It was just considered a, a sport for men. Even in family members would tell me, you should just stop playing soccer because that's not gonna take you anywhere. People don't wanna watch women's soccer. I just felt like my dreams were put down. And I was like 10 years old, you know? It wasn't like, I was a kid. And I think that was like the most direct and like blunt and like almost heartbreaking thing that someone ever told me. I think the deep desire that I had of reaching my dreams was so big that I've never lost hope. I remember being in, in my room and in the mirror and, you know, picturing myself being in a, in a full stadium, with, you know, with just playing soccer and people came there to watch us. And I would get impatient because I would just not see in the near future how that was gonna be possible. The biggest thing that I could aspire was the national team, but it was frustrating because there was not proper trainings, no proper preparation whatsoever. I would find myself wanting to get better, but couldn't because of the environment. And that's when I knew that I wanted to 
to get out of the country and just play somewhere else. But for the Costa Rican national team, Rodriguez was their future. So they called her into training at just 11 years old. For the next decade, she worked to create the recognition she always believed the women's game deserved. And in 2015, it came when they wrote history and competed in their first World Cup. The games were televised uh, at home, so we had exposure. We were the national team. We were Costa Rica. It wasn't women or men, it was Costa Rica. And when I was in the national team, or even a little girl, I didn't have like a Costa Rican role model whom I can say, well, I want to be like her. Like I know about Mia Hamm, and she was so inspiring to me. I think now I can be that for another Costa Rican. To see all that come to fruition, it's, it feels good. <laughs> From her early struggles in Costa Rica to becoming the Rookie of the Year in the NWSL, Rodriguez knows that everything she has become is because of her journey. I remember when I was a little girl, I was like, oh, I wish I, would, I was born later, the, the days that I would get so frustrated I would cry. And now I look back and I say it's, it, it was worth it. It was necessary to go through that because that was honestly the fuel and the motor inside of me to kind of keep going sometimes. It was a generation in Costa Rica. It was a generation of our national team who together we broke barriers. I almost find purpose in that, you know. I find purpose in being part of a generation and one of, of the people who made history. my warrior mentality, my fight, my will, my desire to rub off on everyone. I want to just bring up the heartbeat of the team a bit. Nobody is going to push and get us into a playoff position but ourselves. But we've got to just believe in one another. We've got the quality of players. It doesn't matter what's happened. We create our own path right now. Fight belief and a willingness to recreate yourself are not just motivational terms for Lloyd, but a lifetime of proven actions. I wouldn't be continuously breaking barriers if I didn't have the will and the desire to want to just keep getting better. The earlier years of Carly, I didn't know how to train hard or my mentality of blaming coaches and blaming teammates and, and not looking inside myself and digging deep inside of me to get the job done. I'm not the same Carly than I was back then. I need to be doing things that are gonna help my game. Extra fitness, ball work. I spend loads and loads of time during the winter rebuilding myself. I think what's, what's hard is you put in the work and you want something magical to happen right then and there. And you know, if you look at my career, the World Cup, you know, was a, it was a major bang. Moments like that don't happen all the time, but they happen at the right time. And, and those big moments were those moments where I love to shine the most. And it's just been a, a fun, tough journey to the top. I wouldn't want it easy. I've had to play with a chip on my shoulder. I've had to prove people wrong, but I wouldn't trade it in for anything else. I want my, my legacy to be someone who outworked everybody, who showed up to training, worked extremely hard, and, and gave it their all. Ultimately, 2019 World Cup, 2020 Olympics, that'll be the closeout of my career. And I want to do everything possible to, to continue to make the team better and players around me better and giving it everything I have with absolutely no regrets.
think where I, I struggle with making the decision is my body still feels good. Like, why give it up if the body is still allowing me to play and the mind and wanting to be there? But I also want to be able to walk and enjoy the latter part of, of my life with my kids because I have missed quite a good amount of their lives and you know I just want to make sure that I'm there for them, supporting them and you know I think it's that, that next transition I'm ready for. Change, something Christy Pierce has faced often this past year. She retired from the U.S. women's national team and quietly shed the name she carried on her jersey, Rampone, after she and her husband divorced. You know, some things just don't work out. You know, we were traveling a lot. We were separated a lot. You know, it was almost we lived two separate lives. And, you know, I wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. You know, I just it was unhealthy in the environment we got into. And I started seeing it affect who I was as a person and how I was as a mom. And, you know, I had to be a, a strong female and just kind of make that decision that it was time to separate and see if I can get who I was back. You know, I do have a lot of guilt. I do have a lot of stress in that aspect of am I doing the right thing and then you know I go to therapy and I'm not afraid to admit that to kind of get over those unknowns of life and I think my whole life has been about the unknown the uncertainty coming from a small school and getting that call up for the national team that was fear of the unknown can I do this am I capable of doing this and it's kind of the same thing when you're making that decision is it the right for the kids is it right for me is it right for the family like what's the next step and I was scared um, it was definitely a hard decision. It took a long time for me to make the decision to finally make the move to get out. That's the thing is when you get rid of so much stress in your life, you realize how much more enjoyable life can be too. I do have doubts in my mind sometimes. Can I do it? You know, being a single mom and playing a sport and having a career and wanting to do the best for the kids and make sure the kids are you know, in a healthy environment. And it's just getting through it and just focusing day to day and not looking too far ahead, just, you know, whatever presents itself, that's kind of how I'm rolling with it. And as long as I see the girls smiling, I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm very proud of where I am. I know what I've accomplished and that I was strong and confident enough of a female to, to do it all. I kind of found myself again and, you know, I'm living this new lifestyle that I'm really enjoying and, you know, laughing again and you know, I just bought a new house and I'm decorating it and enjoying it and the kids are, in a new neighborhood and I'm on a on the up. I'm in a, a positive direction and you know ready for my my next life. Eu não escondo, não escondo de ninguém que eu sou fã dela. É uma pessoa que eu admiro, é uma ídola. Então, ter ela perto é muito bom. E ter a amizade dela, é, não tem tempo ruim. A gente, toda hora a gente tá brincando, tá se divertindo. Isso me deixa feliz, porque era um sonho de, de criança estar ao lado dela. E hoje eu tô realizando isso diariamente. A Camila é... A gente tem uma amizade muito boa. Ela, ela, ela me ouve por ser uma uma atleta que tem um talento enorme, eu fico pegando o pé dela, não pode comer isso, não pode comer aquilo. Ela, ela é muito nova, ela tem hoje a possibilidade que eu tive quando eu era nova também, mas eu preciso colocar na cabeça dela que ela hoje tem 22 anos e ela pode crescer muito, ela já está jogando muito. Para aquelas atletas que ouvem as coisas e não leva muito a sério, talvez não, não sirva muito, não faça muito efeito. Mas quando você tem a determinação e está convicta daquilo que você quer, tem muita coisa que a gente pode já, né, com, com, um, com um simples gesto, uma palavra, ajudar e aquela atleta levar a sério e seguir em frente o teu caminho. Ela é... A cobrança dela é muito grande, a cobrança dela é muito grande e ela cobra bastante. Às vezes eu nem estou na jogada, mas a cobrança dela é muito forte. Então, a, a todo momento eu estou tentando fazer a minha parte, ajudando ela, porque a gente, a gente se entende. Eu acho que a raça dela, a força de vontade, ela odeia perder, mas ela sempre, sempre vai querer estar em primeiro lugar, sempre. Não importa quem esteja na sua frente, sempre tem alguém melhor que você, mas você tem que trabalhar ao máximo 
para sempre, para sempre estar entre os melhores. E ela faz parte de um trabalho que eu que eu me entrego a minha vida inteira, que é jogar futebol. E aí, quando você se depara com um atleta que é, realmente nasceu sabendo jogar futebol, ela não foi feita. O estilo de jogo, o estilo de bater na bola, de dribles, é o estilo de um atleta que nasceu com esse talento, não é um atleta feita. E aí a atenção é muito maior e a vontade de querer fazer com que ela evolua é muito grande. Ela está me lapidando e é bom porque ela já viveu uma grande história, mas ela está me lapidando para que isso talvez aconteça. Isso só vai depender de mim, tudo depende de mim, mas quando você tem uma melhor do mundo ao seu lado, eu acho que as coisas acabam ficando mais fáceis. Of course I've asked why. I'm only human. Of course it's stressful. And I'm a mom. I have to get up and move my kid again. Yeah, it's stressful. Yeah, I ask why. For me to bounce around outside looking in, it looks a little insane. It looks crazy. Wow, six teams in five years? How? how? And you're still standing. You're still here. You're still playing. I think my ability to continue to play physically has made a huge impact on my mindset, whether or not I should finish playing, because of course it's crossed my mind. Is this worth it? Now I'm at the point in my career where I really think it is because I haven't felt this great literally my entire career, even as a teenager. So I'm just taking advantage of being able to physically still go, still able to make a huge impact on this league and obviously getting my first call up with the national team. This is what I worked for is to get that call up. I was 28 then. I waited 28 years for that phone call. One phone call in my entire career and it came. My goal still to this day is to make the roster, to get a contract with the national team. Being 29, I'm still shooting for it because the sky's the limit. Motivation is not something that McDonald is lacking, but it emanates not from national team call-ups or accolades, but rather from her five-year-old son, Jeremiah, who drives her with something far greater than sport, love. I'm in a team environment and I want him to be surrounded by that. I want him to be surrounded, not just by sports, but positive environments and what it takes to get to where you want to get to because I want to inspire him, not just as his mom, but almost as an idol for him because kids' first idol is their parents. I want him to be greater than what I was at no matter what he's gonna do. I want him to say one day, hey, my mom did it. I was there. I got to watch my mom play soccer. She did incredible things. And I want him to remember these days. And so from the bottom of my heart, that's just what inspires me every single day. I get up early, I'm in bed late, but it's because of him and I'm okay with that. A lot of the stress from soccer in my life has just come from expectations and having really high goals and then usually falling short. That's kind of my personality. But the best way to deal with it is to not let the stress have power over you. I'm trying to approach soccer in a way that allows me to be successful in kind of a fluid way. So in the past, if I had a goal, sometimes I would kind of like try to jam it and like make it work and force it. If I lost, I thought I was a loser and if I won, I thought I was a winner. And my worth was all wrapped up in my game and it's just not a healthy place to play and it's not a healthy place to live. A few things happened after college that set me up to be able to change my perspective. One of them was learning to meditate. If you talk to players about getting in the zone, everyone talks about this like mindlessness that comes when you're playing at your best. You can play off your instincts and you don't really have to think. And that's exactly the same as meditation. 
but it's like when you're totally focused in the present moment, you actually are able to absorb and perceive so much more. And if you have like a lot of thoughts going on, and so you're staying with the, man, I wish I hadn't passed that ball, I should have done this, or man, I blew it, I've already missed six shots today, then you're not going to see and feel and smell and know what's happening behind you. On the field, I'm able to be aware of so much more that is not in the front of my head. It's in my subconscious, and I think that that kind of helps you um, like exist in the game. My happiness is my responsibility, and so for me, just every day, deciding who I want to be and how I want to live, and then trying not to stray from that intent um, has brought me so much self-love and the happier I am, the bigger my face is lit up, like that's an indicator of my performance that day. Right now, I think that I'm just beginning the climb uh, to actually feel totally satisfied. Satisfaction is a really hard thing to achieve, especially for me and especially in this sport. You can always get better. And so I see a shot and maybe it went in, but I can still see the space that that would have been the perfect shot. In some ways, that's like at odds with a lot of the other things that I'm trying to do to live my life. But I, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike the fact that I can't be satisfied with how I am. I think that that's something that's been inside of me and that is probably the biggest thing that has helped me achieve what I have and get to this place in my career. I think it's that itch, that burning desire to be better. As a kid, my mom used to say it's a mistake not to dedicate yourself to what you can be great at, and that's just always stayed with me, that there's always more I can give. Ever since I was little, I would always have a ball at my feet. I think having my older sister and going to all of her games, she was always my inspiration growing up. Just looking up to her and wanting to be just like her pushed me. I didn't play my last season of high school soccer, and instead I trained with the boys, and I wish I could have played, but I think sometimes you're going to have to make those sacrifices. Being in an uncomfortable position is it's where you're going to grow the most. And I was comfortable playing with girls my age, so I just kind of wanted to step outside of that and really push myself. I think just having that competitive spirit, and my parents raised me just that you have to work for everything. Pew also credits her father for always standing beside her, and her mother for allowing her to find her way. I think just having her through it all and... She always said that, um, this is so hard. She never forced anything on me and my sister, and she was always like, if you want to go play volleyball, go play volleyball, like, go do what you want to do, and we're just going to support you. And I didn't really realize how much she, like, lived by that until, like, last year when I did decide to go to college, and she was like, no matter what, like, I'm always going to support you. That support proved to be vital when in April of this year, Pew had a change of heart and left college before ever playing a game to pursue a professional career. I just had just a nagging thought over the past year, like what if I were to go pro and where can you be if you were to step outside of your comfort zone? I think that's kind of just the thought that kept on processing for me. You just kind of have to set your priorities straight. And I think for me, I just kind of realized where I want to be in the future and kind of what I want to do. So I think just making that next decision was what I needed. And it just kind of gives hope that girls can do anything that they set their minds to. And I think that it's just going to be just like a kind of stepping stone. And there will be girls to follow. Just that hope that you actually can do it and you can follow your dreams.
I think last year is a good example of just the challenges that I face personally from being one of the faces of the league and being expected to perform day in and day out with the national team and on my club team. And I feel like I didn't live up to my own expectations and that was really difficult, but I also felt like I was getting a lot of criticism um, from people outside of the team. It is challenging in its ways, and that's why I feel like I'm so open about confidence and, and my confidence, and if it's not coming from myself, getting that from my teammates, my coaches, my family. And I feel like, for me, if I'm not in it mentally, if I don't give the effort, if I don't feel confident or believe in myself or know that I belong, then you're not gonna perform at your best. Coming into Orlando, I felt eager to get back in with the team and I knew that I put the club in a very difficult position in coming back late, so I wanted to make sure that I was making up for last time. I knew there was going to be an adjustment level with Marta. I needed to adjust quickly and find my role within the team and find the relationship that me and Marta could have. I know that Marta is a very crafty player. She's a player that draws defenders to her. And in that, I feel like she's created a lot of space for me to be able to run in behind the back line or in front of the back line. And I feel like I'm just able to connect with her without even words. It's something where when it clicks, it clicks. Marta and Morgan, boy, those two looking good together. I feel really good. I feel like for the first time in the US, in a league that I'm able to showcase who I am on the national team. I feel like for a long time, it wasn't able to translate the contributions I made on the national team to my club team as much. But I, I feel like now it's able to translate a lot easier. I'm able to get goals and assists and feel like I'm able to play a complete game start to finish and contribute through the whole game. And that's a really good feeling. Sam is the one person that I go to for everything, especially for soccer. I'm one of those people where if something's not going well, I don't really like to talk about it, so when she knows something's wrong, she'll kind of take a step back at first, but then like she knows that she has to push me a little bit to help me out. I kind of wear my emotions on my sleeve, so I think that I can help her out in that way, but I think too that she's always wanted to toughen me up, so when we were kids and she would bury my face in the snow and I'd run in crying, her excuse was always, you need to toughen up, like, we need you to be stronger. And it's our own way of sharing our best qualities with each other and making the other person better. Having two parents uh, who were athletes their entire life shaped the way that Sam and I kind of grew up because they were so competitive, they're both ambitious, they're both driven, and I think we kind of wanted to be just like them. When we were really young, we'd go out and play 1v1 and I would lose by 10 goals every time and I think that was great for me. I was always just like one step behind, wanting to catch up to her, so I think that me measuring myself against someone who was obviously better than me was so good for me. We both had the same goal when we were younger. We both wanted to play for the national team. We both wanted to play professional soccer and we kind of just fed off of each other, pushed each other more and more. All kids say, I want to be a professional athlete and there sometimes isn't anyone else to really say, well, you can, like, that's possible. So as Christy started to get called into a U15 camp and a U17 camp, it kind of made me realize that this was real and I could do it. She has been my example for my entire life. I've never not looked to her. So a lot of the things that are good about me have come from her. And I don't know that she sees that, but I mean, she should. I think back then I didn't realize how lucky I actually was to have her. And I think now, if I didn't have her, I don't think I'd be here today where I am playing professionally because I don't know if I would have been able to really push myself the, the way that I did growing up. But now, thinking about it, having her literally has made me who I am today. I feel like there are a lot of soccer families out there that have really talented kids, and I'm sure there will be more sisters to come, but it's really cool for both of us to be able to play against each other in the same league and kind of share this experience as we both go through the ups and downs of being a professional soccer player. 
We're playing professional soccer in kind of a brand new league. We're building something and we're both a part of it. And I think we're gonna really be thankful that we did do this when we were this age and I think we're gonna have it for the rest of our lives and it's just, it's just it makes me happy. When I was younger, I would write down on a piece of paper that I wanted to play for the U.S. national team, and I had no idea that I would ever play for Mexico. I grew up in Idaho, and I've been in America my whole life, so playing for Mexico wasn't something that I really dreamt of doing. But, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing that I played for Mexico. I think it's a part of my journey, and honestly, did wonders for me. It helped me with my confidence, because I never knew that I could play internationally. So playing for Mexico made me realize, like, I can play at this level. I can play against the best players in the world and I do think that it helped me realize what I wanted and how bad I want to play for the U.S. Over the years I've been given a lot of advice and last year one of our assistant coaches said you have control over everyone else's perception of you and that quote spoke to me and it was like wow I think all of these things about myself but does anyone else like these people are telling me that I should just play for Mexico like they must not see me the way that I see myself and so that was something that I really took in and I realized that it wasn't good enough the last two years and a part of me felt sorry for myself, like, oh, why haven't I gotten called into camps? Why aren't I scoring more goals? And I, I felt sorry for myself, and I finally woke up and was like, what are, you so what are you feeling sorry about? Like, you have control over your life. If you want to change things, like, you're the only person who can do that. <laughs> so why aren't you doing it? Huerta seized that moment by making physical and mental changes to her life and her game. U.S. women's soccer took notice and invited her to train with the national team while she awaits FIFA's approval. My dream is to be on that World Cup roster in 2018 and then the Olympics and just to be a constant player on the national team, like that is my dream. And so right now I'm just looking forward to completing that in any way that I can because it's not guaranteed. <laughs> Getting called into a camp is amazing, but it doesn't mean anything. So I'm just waiting to see what I can do with my journey and how far I can really take this dream that I have. And if I do that, and at the end, I don't make an Olympic roster, a World Cup roster, that's okay with me because I think I've learned over the time that soccer is not everything. Soccer in my life right now is super prevalent. It's what I think about 99% of the time, but in the grand scheme of things, it's very little. <laughs> so of course my dream is to play for the US. I think I would cry if I ever played for them in a big tournament. But at the end of the day, if I don't make a team, I know that I put everything that I could into making this team, and I will never regret that, ever. I remember being on the podium and getting the medal and I just remember like this sigh and this just like whew. it's just this feeling that it was all worth it and that it was this accumulation of all of this pain all of these obstacles you've gone through or sacrifices you've made but then it starts to kind of get where you start to mentally your identity starts to kind of falter with it and you know everywhere I went it was Olympic bronze medalist Stephanie Labe and you start to identify with it like that's who you are and I think it takes you away from looking at the medal and seeing the entire journey and remembering everything that went into it. You're identified by that one moment and so I think that that was a big struggle for me that I am not that medal. It's definitely a part of me but it's not everything about me and there's so much more to me than that one medal. That identity crisis coupled with a newfound lack of playing time on her professional team sent Stephanie deeper into the depression she fought against. I think that for me it was going from this extreme high to this extreme low and it's just this this feeling of, of a weight and you don't always know that the weight is on you but you wake up in the morning and you just don't have this excitement to take on the day. 
It's so easy as an athlete, I can say, you know, it's when I'm on the field, I want to feel happy and free. But in everyday life, it's like you just feel this burden. And when you don't feel like yourself, it's it's so hard to, to carry on. And It's just like, you just don't feel like yourself. I'm a very social person and I love connecting with people. And when you're in those spaces and people are asking me, do you want to go out for dinner? Do you want to go out and do these social things? And when you don't feel the energy to do that, it's, it's really difficult because you know that that's who you are. Stephanie outwardly searched for a way to manage her sadness. Then she looked inside and found her answer in yoga. I just got to this point where I didn't want anyone else to be able to affect how I felt about myself. And I had stopped worrying about what others thought of me. I had stopped worrying about what the coaches were thinking. I had stopped worrying about playing time. And I just felt that I was exhausting my, my energy to all these external resources instead of like doing things to give myself energy. And yoga has really trained me to, to be present and to be in the moment. When I come into the yoga studio, it's me making a decision to take time for myself and to do something for myself. As much as I go to the gym or I go on the soccer field to train my body, I need to train my mind as well. And that's where I use yoga and meditation is to really train my brain. Stephanie has found clarity in the ebbs and flows of her journey by understanding and embracing them. I'm not fully in my best self, but I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I'm very confident in that and I'm able to be happy with that and not punish myself or identify myself with the negative times, but really just identify myself with who I am and, and really be proud to be Stephanie Labe and be who I am on this day. I hate to lose more than I like to win. And that is what gets me up out of bed every day to compete and to strive for greatness and to win championships. I don't settle. That's what makes me me. And being sidelined for so long this season, it hasn't been easy. Soccer, you know, is a lot of who I am. And when you take that big chunk out of your life, it kind of feels a little empty. What kept me grinding every day was knowing that my moment would come when my team needed me, where we were trying to clinch a playoff, where we were in playoff, and we needed to come up with results. So I just continued to put my head down. It wasn't even a question for me. I knew I was doing it for the team, I was doing it for the city, and I want to win this thing. It's easy for me to create a connection with the fans here because this is my hometown. You know, I share my scars. Like, if I'm not going through a good time, like, I'm okay to talk about it. I'm okay to have my fans come in and, and tell me the same thing. You know, I'm a support system for them, just like they're a support system for me. When I get off the field and I have someone who comes up to me and says, you've saved my life, or for so long I've been different and I didn't fit in, it's good to just have little moments of interaction and connection with these people and just show them that I'm, I'm not untouchable. I'm just like them. I struggle just like them. I think they gravitate towards that and I think they find that inspiring. And if I can help people in a way that being different is beautiful, I just think I want to play that role for them because I tell them every single day I'm different. I love being different, I thrive being different, and it's okay. I think we get this platform and we have a choice, right? We, we can choose to use it in a good way. It's like we all struggle, we all go through a hard time. That's life, that's living. So at least let's do it together. That's my message. Let's rely on each other a little bit more. You know, lean on other people. We need each other. This is how the world works. And soccer is my platform 
to create change. And if I can use my platform to talk about these hard conversations, then I'm doing my job. You know, this is what I was born to do, is bring people together for a bigger cause. And if I can create change while I'm here and leave this game better than when I started, I will be very happy when I retire. I'll be very happy when I leave this earth. Those are the most important things to me. I love the quote that's something along the lines of, get knocked down six times, get up seven times. I think that truly defines what perseverance is. No matter how many times you get knocked down, you get back up every single time. For Casey Short, perseverance is a word she knows all too well. During her senior season at Florida State, Short tore her ACL, MCL, and dislocated her kneecap. After a grueling eight-month rehab, she was finally ready and returned to the field with the U.S. Under-23 team. In our first game, there was another collision, but this time it was my right knee, and you know, having gone through it once before, I knew right away it was very bad. And I had torn my ACL and MCL once again. I was kind of faced with this decision, should I continue to go after my professional dreams, or is this dream really meant for me? But after I got done feeling sorry for myself, I made the decision, I'm gonna come back stronger, and I'm gonna go after my dreams. So the next step basically was to attack my rehab and get myself healthy again. And then I took a step in training and something didn't really feel right in my knee. I knew something was wrong. I wasn't sure going into the surgery what was gonna come out of it. I remember waking up and they told me basically it was the worst case scenario. Everything was torn and my recovery was gonna be twice as long because I had just gotten a surgery the year before on the same knee. So at that point, I definitely considered, is this the end? Am I done? But the endless support of family, teammates, and an unexpected reminder from Chicago Red Stars coach Rory Dames provided hope. As I was still recovering in the hospital and kind of at rock bottom, not really sure what I wanted to do moving forward, I got a text message from Rory basically saying, I still believe in you. I still see you as a part of this team. You can come back from this. And at that point, you know, I, I really needed that because I was very unsure. I had a lot of question marks moving forward. It gave me the confidence and the desire to continue to like go through this process and to want to come back. I think when something that you love so much is taken away from you, you realize how much it means to you. You realize how badly you want something and every single time, <laughs> first, second and third time, I realized more and more how much passion I had for this, how much I love playing. And I am so thankful for you know everything that's happened, the highs, the lows, everything. Because I think it's shaped my journey and I think I'm where I'm meant to be right now. I was in January camp with the national team fighting to get to Olympic qualifying and then I found out I was pregnant. It was tough because I wasn't planning to have a baby anytime soon. My only focus ever uh, since I can remember was soccer so I didn't know life without that in it. But you realize that some things are more important, some things come first, and for me, that's always been family. I always knew that I wanted to be a mom. During her pregnancy, LaRue struggled with the changes to the body she honed for decades. Coupled with a difficult birth, it proved to make her return both mentally and physically challenging. I think that the type of soccer player I've always been is this quick, hard, explosive forward and I was no longer that. I went to turn and it seemed like it took me 15 minutes to just turn the other way and start running. And that's a very kind of disheartening thing to go through because you question yourself and it still scares me. 
Am I ever gonna be what I used to be? Am I ever gonna be as fast, as explosive? Am I gonna love it as much as I used to? And I think that's what I struggled with in the beginning is, wow, I'm a mom. How do you be a mom, an amazing wife, and an amazing athlete? How do you do that? LaRue got one answer she was waiting for when she took the field on April 15th. I had not put a jersey on and played soccer for 656 days. That was very hard. You forget if you're capable of doing the things that you used to be able to do. Ball over the top, LaRue. First time on goal, and she finds the back of the net. LaRue in her first game in over a year scores inside the first seven minutes. As a competitive person, there's always doubts in your mind and you fight those doubts with, with what you really believe. And I would say that every day I've started to feel more like myself, but I'm definitely not 100% yet. But I'm 100% I'm in my heart. And I think it's very important for, for me to feel like so empowered. I mean, to have a baby and to come back, that, that is something that I'm proud of. So for me, I said, the day that we won the World Cup was the best day of my life. And then I got married and I said, that was the best day of my life. And then I had my son and I said, there's nothing even close to the best day when my son was born. So every single milestone that I've hit has always seemed to be the best. And I couldn't ask for anything else. I think this year I started out wanting to find the love for soccer, for football again. And I, f I feel like I found that in France and carrying over to the NWSL, I'm really happy with where I am, but I'm even happier with where this team is. Going out wide for Alex Morgan, back for Marta. Marta going for goal, it sneaks under roll and it's in. And Alex Morgan. Scores! I think we're in a really great position going into the playoffs with the games that we've played over the last two months. The confidence of this team just continues to go up and up. Our Brazilian players have been so fun and they've given a lot of flair to this team. And I know that Marta is a player that draws defenders to her. And in that, I feel like she's created a lot of space for me to be able to run in behind the back line or in front of the back line and I feel like I'm just able to connect with her without even words. It's something where when it clicks, it clicks. Marta driving, deflected, Morgan has a goal! A lot of our team has been in big time moments and have been either in NWSL championship games or been in World Cups or Olympics. So a lot of us understand, you know, the pressure that comes with these playoff games. Will be Kennedy, oh, what a hit from Kennedy! The semifinals are officially set. I would say that it doesn't matter who we're playing in the playoffs, we're prepared to, you know, to go out there and do what we've done these last couple months. Spencer now inside for Morgan, and she buries her second. Alex Morgan, who scored big goal after big goal over her career. Goal number nine of the year. I feel really good with where I am personally in my game and, and the form that I'm in. The one thing on my mind is the championship. I want to be there um, on October 14th. I want to be hoisting the trophy, and so that's in the back of my mind every day, and I feel like I'm trying to do everything in my power to be there. My journey just to get there was so up and down. From Fresno, I played with a small club team. I didn't get recruited by colleges 
to play soccer, um, or a lot of colleges. So it was Fresno State and Pepperdine were the two places that offered me a scholarship. For that moment, I was like, I guess I don't know if I'm good enough. Like, okay, I love the sport, but maybe I'm just, I have a different vision of myself than they do. So when I got to the pro level, I was like, I think I'm good enough, but there's all these amazing players. They've been in this system for so long. I haven't. And so when I got the MVP and the Golden Boot, I was like, oh my gosh, I guess I actually do know this. I am good enough. I can do this. And so it was just kind of a reassurance that I'm good enough to do this. But also, like, Lynn, don't second guess yourself all the time because just because you don't have the same journey as everybody else doesn't mean you're not good enough. For Williams, her magical season was a result of a lifetime of proving herself worthy, something she did once again when she got her first call up to the U.S. women's national team. I know I always have to fight for a chance to get on that roster or a chance to wear the crest. And so anytime I wear it, I'm so honored to put it on. I always have this thing that every time the national anthem goes on, there's a part of it where I like actually touch the crest. And then when, when the banner waves, I always go like this with my hands. And then I like really like hold it. And it reminds me that like I'm in such a place that like a lot of people don't get to be in. And this is like the United States of America. This isn't something small. This is not something to take for granted. And the NWSL is such a huge platform for people to be seen with the national team. I think that some people who slip through the cracks, if somehow you end up on an NWSL team, like it's another way to be like, well, how did we miss her? I also think that in this league now, you see so much diversity, and I think it's so amazing that when I grew up, I saw obviously a lot of soccer players, but like I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. There wasn't many women of color out there playing soccer. And so now when I look around the league, I'm like, you see everything from somebody who's Asian, somebody who's a Latino, somebody who's black, somebody who's white, and I'm like, this is so incredible. Not only are we growing this league for little girls to play soccer, but it's so diverse now. So I think it looks like a representation of the United States. And so if me and the rest of the NWSL, we can like pioneer this league for the next generation, like I'll look back and be like, you know what, I've, I've done something so incredible and that is so amazing. Last year in the semis, falling short and losing against Western New York, now North Carolina Courage, and going through the whole season this year is going to give us a little extra push uh, of motivation going forward. I think this team had a pretty big shift when we played North Carolina at home. And that's all good by Portland right there. I think after that point, we've been linking up, we've been playing forward, scoring some great goals from some great players on our team. The header toward the goal! I think the turning point this season was going to Portland and losing that game. I mean, I think that that was kind of a critical time for us to realize that we're going to get everyone's best game. And I think that we can really just kind of look back on our mistakes and what we did well and really try and capitalize on our chances that we're going to get. And now they're back facing each other again in neutral territory with Portland at full strength. With Tobin coming on now, you have a whole different element and the way you can play. This year's competition is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, Tobin Heath being back, whereas we have Lynn Williams, Ashley Hatch. I think that the fans are going to see an epic finals this year. I would say we are the team to beat. We're ready to apply what we've learned to this next game, and we're ready for anyone that wants to challenge us. We want to win, obviously. That's the biggest goal, uh, and just to play some good soccer. I think it takes us a lot to be a champion and I think the most important part is your heart. Being like in love with the game I think is what it takes to be a champion.